Well, here we are at the arena of the Pennsylvania Lumber Museum, where if you were here during our Bark Peelers Festival, you would see wood hick scale demonstrations. Now, what is a wood hick? If you don't know the term, wood hick is a regional Pennsylvania term for a lumberjack, uh, where people around the country say lumberjack. Here in Northern Pennsylvania, the wood hick used to describe the men who would go out in the woods cut down the trees, work at the lumber camps. Now these men in the late 19th, early 20th century would be out using hand tools such as this crosscut saw, the peavey, and they would hone that the everyday use of these tools and get really good at cutting down lumber quickly and efficiently. Now as bonded technology came along and the crosscut saw gave way to the chainsaw, in order to preserve the traditional skills of the wood hick, the sport of timber sports evolved, which used a lot of the traditional means to help um, preserve these, the way of life of the wood hick of the lumberjack. Uh, again, if you're here on Bark Peelers Festival, the Simcock family and Tom Oliver, you would see them demonstrating these skills in our arena and they'd be more than happy to show you, and here they are to talk a little bit about them. My name is Bill Simcox. With my daughter and Tom Oliver and I, we do the wood hick skills demonstration, which involves timber harvesting practices from 100 plus years ago, with cross cut sawing, chopping wood with axes, log rolling, that sort of thing. I got started in competitive lumberjack competitions in 1976. Bicentennial year, a lot of the municipalities were having bicentennial celebrations, so our small town decided to have a community picnic, which we did. And for games, we had various things, and two of the things we did was two lumberjack events, cross-cut sawing and chopping wood and we went to the local fair Clinton County Fair that year and asked about the fair doing lumberjack events and they said sure we can do that but you got to run it so my cousin and I we ran the event for 30 plus years and we we started out local I used to think it was a long drive going 50 miles to chop wood I've been as far west as Oregon, as far south as Tennessee, up into Canada, Maine, New Hampshire. Met a lot of great people. There's a lot of enjoyable things. Uh, traveling the country, seeing all kinds of different things, meeting people. We've met a lot of great people. I've, I know competitors from all over the world just offered us a lot of opportunities to see different things. When they started felling timber, originally they used axes to drop the timber and to cut it the length and all this. And somebody many years ago developed cross cut saws, efficient cross cut saws for cutting timber, which saved time and wood. And it just kind of evolved into chainsaws after years and we've taken it to another level in the crosscut sawing competition where the saws that we use are handmade racing saws instead of the old style vintage saws and we also do chainsaw events now what the crosscut saws morphed into the, the chainsaws and now some of the saws we run are motorcycle engines, 125cc, 250cc, 300, just crazy wild. Demonstrate an axe throw event. It's not something that really stems from actual logging practices. I've heard a couple different theories on how axe throwing came to be. One being that the timber fallers would get paid for the amount of trees they cut. So if they saw 
a suitable tree in the woods when they were working on another one. They would throw their ax and stick it in that tree and designate that that tree was theirs. Whether that's fact or not, I do not know. But another theory is a bunch of the guys were hanging out in the log camp that I can throw better than you can after they tipped the bottle a few times. So I really don't know the correct origin of axe throw, but it's amusing to think of it. I got started in this with my dad. He used to travel around and go to lumberjack competitions when I was a kid. And then I started crosscut sawing with him in the Jack and Jill competition. And then I started doing a few other things and then a few more things until I was chopping and throwing axe and sawing by myself and running chainsaw. And so that now I'm traveling all over Pennsylvania and New York and West Virginia and I'm competing instead of just watching. I, some of the things I love about the sport is the weirdness of it, I think. Not many people do it. Uh, I guess it's the violist in me coming out. <laughs> I tend to like weirder things, but I like how it's, it's a life skill. Uh, cutting wood by hand is something that comes in handy. Knowing how to cut some wood for firewood or for furniture or whatever you might want to use it for, that's a legitimate life skill and I like having that knowledge. And with the competition, I like, I like the physicality of it. It's very physical and aggressive and brute force power and I like that but it's also technique and refinement and how you present the axe to the wood or how you operate the saw to get the maximum power and efficiency out of it. If you do something wrong or if you come across maybe a knot in the wood that you weren't expecting, you have to make a judgment call immediately what you need to do to fix it while you're going full bore trying to win a race against somebody out here. This is an event that I do not do or I haven't tried it yet. Um, it was predominantly used in the Pacific Northwest where the ground was very steep and the wood there had what they called a butt swell. So at the very bottom of the tree, it was very wide and then maybe 10 feet up or so, it got a lot more narrow. So for the effort to go through the very bottom, big part of the wood wasn't really that profitable for the effort. So they came up on springboards, they would cut a notch into the tree and come up the tree so it's smaller in diameter to cut through, so it's less effort, less time, and also so you can get on even footing. If this side of the tree is very steep and the other side is downhill, you can't really run a cross-cut saw straight across, so it's to get one side up so both sides of the saw are at an evil, even footing and even ground. I got started in competitive lumberjack sports, or also known as timber sports, when I was about 21 or 22 years old when I started college at Penn State Mont Alto in 2005. I heard they had a what they called a woodsman's team, and a lot of my friends were going to try out for it, and I tried out for it and made it, and ended up just falling in love instantly, probably with like the first swing of the axe. I got my start there and have not stopped since then. After college, I started and, well, I continued, but started in professional timber sports and travel, I travel all up and down the East Coast competing every year from about Memorial Day weekend to, oh, September. The reason why I've continued with timber sports and have put a lot of time and effort into it is, I love the competitive aspect of it and always trying to better myself and beat my previous times. I love the, the lumberjack community and all the good friends. I've, I've made some lifelong friends and will probably be friends with them for the rest of my life. I also just love chopping wood. It's good, uh, ec it's great exercise. It's great stress relief. Um, you can beat on a piece of wood and it can't hit you back. So those are some of the things I love. I just, uh, something about it just kind of when, when you're into timber sports, it hooks you and you just can't stop. And that's 
how it's been for me.